week in Thought for the Day, we're exploring the story of the uh, paralysed man who meets Jesus in Mark chapter 2. And we're taking a different perspective each day. Today we think about Jesus' perspective. And uh, I'll read the first few verses of the story just to uh, put it into context. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he'd come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralysed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When he saw their faith, he said to the paralysed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Um, it's got to be one of the greatest surprises in the story, hasn't it? Maybe we're so familiar with it, we, we lose the fact that this is a surprise, but it's a huge surprise that Jesus talks to the man in that way. Just think about what's just happened. Uh, suppose you were there in the crowd. You thought the room was full and then you heard this sound of um, uh, the roof being broken open. And as soon as the stretcher starts to uh, be lowered down, you realise that actually you want to move back in order to make room for it to land. So everyone squeezes back. This already full room becomes a little bit fuller. The stretcher lands eventually on the floor in front of Jesus. Jesus looks down, maybe bends down, opens his mouth to speak to the man and says, Son, I heal you. Son, pick up your mat and walk. That's what you're expecting. That's what you're, if, you, if you've got any kind of faith in Jesus, that surely is what you're expecting. And I suspect that's what the four guys on the roof who've just lowered the, their friend through it were expecting. Maybe it's what the man himself was expecting. And Jesus instead, instead says, son, your sins are forgiven. I've often remarked when I preach on this, slightly tongue in cheek, uh, the man's reply is not recorded. And maybe it's because it was unprintable. Uh, I mean, what's this man going to say? Look, Jesus, thanks for nothing. Can you not see what I need? I am a paralysed man. I have no kind of life at all. I need my body back. And instead, you talk some mumbo jumbo about sins and forgiveness. Thanks for nothing. Maybe that's what the man was thinking. But Jesus actually, of course, is going to go on to heal him physically. That's later in the story. We'll look at that later in the week. It's astonishing, though, isn't it, that Jesus forgives the man's sins first. And the more we think about it, the more we realise that is because that is Jesus's priority. The man's spiritual health, if we can put it that way, is a far greater priority than the man's physical health. You see, having the man's body restored to him, which is what Jesus is going to go on to do, means a transformed life in this world. Who knows what happened to the man after this story when he was able to walk again? Maybe he got a job, maybe he bought a house, maybe he got married and had a family and lived to a ripe old age, but then he died. And since then, he's been living in heaven with his loving Heavenly Father. And that's because Jesus forgave his sins. All the things that stood between him and God, separating and making that relationship spoiled, Jesus dealt with those. And therefore, of course, it's Jesus's priority because it's a far bigger deal. Your sins and mine are a bigger problem for us than anything else going on in our lives. You may be suffering the most terrible illness you may be in the depths of grief. You may have just lost your job or had a family breakdown uh, or a, a relationship that went sour. I don't know what your situation is. And if you are going through those things, then please talk to someone. Come and talk to me about it and we'll pray about it. And, uh, 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 and I, I'd love to give you some, uh, some pastoral support. But I've got to tell you, that Jesus' treatment of this paralysed man indicates that Jesus says all those problems are less of a problem than the problem of your sin, because that has eternal consequences. And as well as everything else that Jesus wants to help you with, he wants to help you and me deal with the problem of our sin. 
You know, some people are acutely aware of the problem of this, and some people have so much guilt in their lives that that it really is a a, a massive problem for them. But uh, all of us, I hope, from time to time at least, are aware of our sins. The fact that we don't live up to our own standards, let alone God's. Maybe there's a particular thing that you just keep doing that you a habit that you can't shake that bothers you. Or maybe a particular thing in the past, one specific thing that you did that you've always felt guilty about. Have you asked for Jesus' forgiveness? Because he does forgive all who truly turn to him. And here he shows us that not only has he got the power to do it, but that it's his priority as well. I'm going to say a prayer now, and it's a prayer in two parts. The first part is a confession prayer, asking God to forgive our sins. And if you've uh, not known forgiveness of your sins, I encourage you to pray that prayer in full assurance that God will forgive you. And then the second part of the prayer is a thanksgiving, thanking God that he does uh, that amazing thing for us. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus forgives our sins. Thank you that he forgave the sins of this man in the story, showing it was his true priority but thank you that elsewhere in the Bible that forgiveness is promised to all of us. We confess our sins. We've not loved you with our whole heart. And we've not loved our neighbour as ourselves. Please forgive us. And we thank you for the uh, freedom that is ours in Christ because you forgive us freely. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Hope you can come back tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you.